Hi, I'm Tony Kraut with Watson Drill Rigs. I'm the sales manager here at Watson, and we're a four-generation family-owned business. We build foundation construction drilling equipment that serves multiple industries. We put them on excavator mount, truck mount, and crawler mount, and even crane mount drill attachments. Watson Drill Rigs, right here from Fort Worth, Texas. We're made in America with Texas pride and workmanship in every product that we make. Everybody on our team believes in that product and believes in, in the contractor who uses that product is out there to use it as a tool to serve his needs. A driller is a term that's given to a skilled professional who has a responsibility to penetrate the earth with a rotary and a feed device in search of whatever resource he's been tasked with. A lot of drillers, and when you hear the term driller, you think of oil or water or gas, and those are common driller terms also. But there's also other types of drilling applications that are used to include blast hole, uh, exploratory drilling, and construction drilling, which is what we're gonna talk about today. In construction drilling application, the driller is given the responsibility to drill a board shaft down to a predetermined formation, and a rebar cage is then placed and concrete is poured to support the structure. Within these few minutes, I'd like to talk to you about those roles and responsibility the driller has, as well as some of the challenges he's gonna face and some of the responsibilities he has to ensure the quality product at the conclusion of the project. There are several common terms used for drilled shaft construction to include drilled shaft, drilled caisson, drilled pier, board pile, or cast and hold drilled pile, which is commonly used on the West Coast. All of those reference a drilled shaft construction project, which is an excavated borehole that's down to a predetermined elevation of competent material. Once that's sourced and, and identified, then the rebar cage is then installed inside the board pile and concrete's poured to the surface to support the load as designed. So the structural engineer, meets with the architect to determine what the column loading requirement is of that structure. Whether it's a single level, double level, or a bridge construction, it has a weight, it has a mass to it. So the structural engineer needs to determine what that weight is and, con and convert that to column loading as to what, what diameter and to what depth those drilled shafts need to be to be able to support that structure. Column loading is calculated in KIPS in the industry. So once this drilled shaft design is implemented, then it's given to the general contractor who will hire especially subcontractors, a driller to go out and execute the project as designed. It's very important that we reference as designed so the driller understands what his requirements are. Now the driller has a choice. He has a choice on what rig to take to that job site. He has a choice on what tooling to take to that job site. But what he doesn't have a choice in is what diameter to drill and to what depth to drill because he needs to follow the instructions of the design as it was predetermined. So it's very important that we consider that. And it's amazing some of the different geology we have on our earth and some of the different things that have created the topographic that we have that we see today. And it's an evolution of four and a half billion years to create what we see here. But there's layers of history that lie below the surface where we are now that expose the tectonic plate movement, volcanic activity, sedimentary and erosion, all the stuff that's unknown to the normal person. But a driller now has an opportunity to penetrate those soils and expose that evolution of of changing uh, earth as we have it today. And he sees that and he brings material to the surface that's never been to the surface in a million years. And I think it's kind of exciting to be a driller and you see that soil, you see that changing rock and you wonder, how did this get here? What made this happen? And it's, it's a study of history and a lot of people uh, specialize in studying that. But the fortunate thing as a driller is you get to expose that. But the, more, more than that is as you're penetrating that soil, you're gonna get a different response to that drill rig. That drill rig is gonna have a different erratic rotation or smooth rotation as you change in those transitional zones. And it's exposing that hard sedimentary rock to a soft clay layer or a saturated sand layer, or even the basement rock of granite. Once you penetrate into that, you're gonna get different erratic responses in those transitional zones. And why is that important? Well, the drill responds differently. And the driller being a professional, he needs to be monitoring that drill rig as to how that tool's responding down that hole. Because his end objective, as we mentioned earlier, is a straight drilled shaft is his end product. And it's gotta be on center, it's gotta be on location, it's gotta be in the right trajectory. In those changing soil conditions, if a driller is very aggressive, he could get that hole to deviate off. And a crooked hole, trying to straight a crooked hole, is harder than if you drilled it right straight the first time. 
I have the fortunate opportunity to work here at Watson and seeing the maturity of the different uh, transitions from the different generations. And I met Jack Watson when I first started here in 2004. And Jack always said that a drill rig does two things, turns and pushes. Now it's up to the driller to decide is how fast or how slow or how hard or how light to push because you're gonna get a different performance of that drill tool in this changing soil conditions, but the driller can tune the tool to those soil conditions because it's ultimate objective is to maintain a straight hole. And by adjusting the speed and the rotation, he can get that tool to advance properly. And obviously it's an economic issue. We gotta maintain an optimum penetration rate to get that drill shaft done in a expected amount of time period. So there's a, a balance of that, but ultimately it's better to take your time and drill a hole straight the first time. As the driller excavate that shaft, that's the first step of a three stage process that he has to do to execute the product because really the driller advances a whole, but really he's a manufacturer. By a manufacturer, he's producing this drilled shaft product. And the drilled shaft product is not complete until the steel rebar cage is set in place and concrete is then poured to the surface. And it's very important that steel rebar cage is centralized in the drilled shaft. If you've ever poured wax into a mold or used a, a casting and poured concrete into a casting like a statuary or a, or a planter, or whatever it might be, and you pull the mold away, the solidified product inside is your end product that you're trying to create. Realize a drilled shaft is very much the same thing, is that drilled shaft is the mold in which that drilled shaft is gonna be poured into, and that's the shape that it's gonna be forevermore. Okay, you can't change it after that concrete's in there, that's your end product. So it's very important that that drill shaft is straight and on, on target and on point to the right depth, because um, that's gonna be the end product as it is. To centralize the rebar cage, we recommend quick clock pier wheel and pier boots on the bottom of the vertical rebars to help centralize that rebar cage in the drilled shaft. Because it's very important that concrete is allowed to flow externally of that rebar cage and make skin friction contact with the drilled shaft itself and that that rebar cage is then encased in that concrete to prevent erosion and degradation of the shaft which ultimately would lead to failure of that drilled shaft. The concrete is also as important that it's introduced properly so that there's not an anomaly and it flows evenly outside that rebar cage from the bottom to the top. Now many people may pour the concrete through the top or they may introduce it through a trimming pipe from bottom to top, displacing any fluid off the top of it to, so they ensure 100% flowability of that concrete throughout the shaft. We're fortunate that there's uh, professionals out there that design the foundation for our structures. Most people that use the building, the library, the office building, the bridge, the power line that delivers power to the home have no idea the foundation that all those things sit upon because wherever they are, the foundation may not be stable. So it's important that we have stability of that foundation and that's where drilled shafts are so important is they transfer that load down to a competent static layer that'll support that structure regardless of what happens on the surface. Now I applaud those people that are in this industry and that are out there every day in the mud, turning the auger, making holes, the designers that design these foundation elements for the benefit of us, okay? Future generations will be rewarded because of the work that's done today. And populations will continue to grow. Infrastructure will continue to have to be developed. So there's always gonna be opportunities in this construction market. And I recommend and applaud anybody who's considering coming to this construction market. There's great opportunity, there's great reward. There's also great challenges, which keeps it quite interesting. So I thank you very much for your time and look forward to visiting with you someday in the future. Thank you. This video was made courtesy of Peer Research, the standard of excellence, manufacturer of high quality alignment and centralizer products for the deep foundation and earth retention industries.